Truth Frequency Radio Network. KTFRN. Worldwide. Shadowland Voyagers, in the spirit of sovereignty and self-empowerment, we invite you to journey with us into the Shadowland. Let's rediscover, reclaim, and integrate the fragmented aspects of our individual and collectively held consciousness. Realize true freedom and restore authentic expression. Could it be the only way out is through the Shadowland? Welcome, Shadowland Voyagers, to Episode 8, Beginning of a New Epic or a Grand Deception. Are we alchemists of the great ship or pawns in a, in a scam that we unwittingly bought into? Are we living at the moment of the great revealing or just buying into someone's crazy sci-fi novel? Is this the beginning of a new epic or have we all been deceived? Welcome, everyone. Tonight, we're going to explore these questions. What's really going on? And is there really anything any of us can do about it? A lot of us are actually let down. We've heard cases of people being depressed, confused, even angry, asking if 20, uh, December 21st was the worst apocalypse ever. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> worst end of the world ever. <laughs> yes. You Okay, we're all here, Elizabeth. Christina? Yes, we're here. Okay. So we're going to ask some questions tonight. We're going to open up a lot of topics. Is there something monumental going on uh, that we can participate in? Here at Shadowland Voyagers, we're experiencing huge potentials, unprecedented potentials for shift. We're going to break that down. We're going to open this, offer some support, uh, and share our own direct experience. Um Christina, what about that quote from Diana Harris? I was going to read that right now. I really love that. Is that okay? Yeah, please. Okay. To live is to change, to mature, to create oneself, and to awaken to our inner possibility. Navigating our way through the changes in our lives can feel like a daunting task. We can find ourselves outside the realm of our experiences, understanding comfort zones in uncharted waters and unfamiliar terrain. This is the space between the old energy and the new. This place can feel frightening and disruptive, but it is the space of awakening and creativity. Welcome to the Shadowland. Evening, everybody. Welcome to the After Apocalypse Show. <laughs> uh, we're calling you from 5D. We just want you to know it's great up here. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, we're back. We're having a l few technical issues, uh, so we apologize, uh, but we are uh, here. Now, 
<laughs> and we are going to uh, be sharing uh, what we're experiencing here with this uh, change of the age. Wow, this has just been such a crazy uh, week, uh, hasn't it, you all, in terms of uh, what, what's happening in the outer and um, I was going to ask you, Elizabeth, this glorious uh, concept of externalizing to kind of bring us into the talk of what we're seeing and also your uh, your understanding of belief because I think they're both inherent in what we're experiencing with people being depressed and incredibly angry that uh, the world is still here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I had an interesting week myself. <laughs> it's it's it, it comes a point when uh you know that it, it seems like the, that there's more and more compression um like if if you haven't reached the amount of compression to be able to flow with these energies, you're certainly feeling it. And it seems that uh, it's to cleanse out, uh, to bring into the light the shadows. And uh, any attempt at externalizing this experience is uh, adding to the compression. So if you want a quick fix, a quick answer, if you want, uh, or if you want to put this on somebody else or... Um, it's just going to fly right back in your face in a, a really intense way. Whoa! Get down, Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that. That's what's happening with me. So. Um, oh. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I mean, a lot of people don't even know what we're talking about. We're, we use mm-hmm. the word compression, um, and and even externalization. I mean, a lot of people are just angry, or depressed, or um, you know, there's. Um, We've heard a lot of information that there was going to be a dimensional shift, that this was one of the biggest events of all time on December 21st, and many people are simply experiencing that nothing has changed. Um, so, well, at least what on a you- massive scale. I mean, nothing has changed on a big, massive scale. I mean, that's the thing. It seems like a lot of people were holding on to different ideas. Um, regarding what was going to happen on December 21st. And when those beliefs didn't come to pass, it was like, you know, a rug was pulled out from under them. And, you know, I know it hurts, it sucks, but no one made them stand on that rug. And, um, you know, we got to take responsibility for what we choose to believe. And I think more than ever, it is just so important to let go of beliefs and expectations and um, be present here and not hold on to anything beyond what you know. And, you know, that means you have to work to identify your beliefs from your knowings because beliefs are tricky, you know. They'll kick you in the ass. Well, they've kicked me in the ass. <laughs> and um, it sucked. Yeah. So yeah. let's. Let's, I feel like we just need to slow this down and like, <laughs> I just feel like the average guy going, what? What are these crazy women's beliefs? We're supposed to assess. Do you know how many people I've been studying? I've been preparing. I've been working for this. Uh, the, the, how many YouTube videos? How much information did we get about, you know, zero point and, and galactic alignments and, and science and NASA and there's so much information out. You know, what are we supposed yeah. to do now? What are we supposed yeah. to burn our computers? Yeah. What, uh, but, but I mean, I hear what you're saying. I'm being devil advocate, uh, Christina, because I just feel like uh, I want to address, you know, that, I mean, I know that there was a part of me for a while that really wanted to believe uh, that the earth was just going to turn, and we're going to lose the whole third dimension, and we were ju- this was just going to happen to us. And I totally have compassion that people uh, want to see a major, major shift, that want to see something in the outer just hugely and profoundly. Uh, and so I think there's a huge lesson. I, I feel like holding us all, though, gently in each other's arms and going, we're still in the third dimension, y'all. But is anything shifted? Is anything going on? Are we are we needing to look in a different way at this? And with I mean, I'm, I don't want to make anybody bad or wrong, or you know, laugh in um, anyone's face or, or demean anybody, because there's been a huge amount of hype, both in terms of the end of the world. 
hype and the huge preparedness aspect and and then the ascension. There are so many scenarios out there. This is what we're talking about with belief, right, with externalization. And it's not like we're just idiots. They're coming at us from so many profound angles with big stories. And it doesn't look like any of those stories are exactly what's playing out. So where are we? You know? Yeah. I, I realize that so much um, of what I thought I knew was just, you know, a smorgasbord of other people's ideas and experiences mixed with my own. And actually, over the course of this year, I discovered um, quite painfully in some areas that what I truly know is not really a whole lot, actually. It's rather simple, and um, it stems from my own personal experiences and all the research I've done over my life of truth thinking. I mean, that's great. It's played a major role in the expansion of my awareness, and I'm not discounting the importance of that. And for anyone out there who's still, you know, looking to what other people think and feel and what's going on, that's great. But um, for me, it's just I find myself, especially now with 2012 having passed, just falling back more and more into myself and my own knowings and just letting go and it kind of just seems like all that really matters for me now is that I exist here and now and taking things as they come on a moment to moment basis um, just seems to be, uh, for me, what it's all about. Um, yes. Well, maybe that's one of the huge, huge uh, lessons that we're getting from this is like, we have been children programmed by authority figures, right? and now we have the Internet. Now we have these mega stories and people who seem very authoritative telling us how things are going to play in our world. And there's some stories that are very terrifying. There are stories that are very compelling. And uh, it's like we're children at the candy store of timelines. You know, which one are we going <laughs> to stick our little hands in the co- that cookie jar, that cookie jar? And suddenly we're getting, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know, I, I need to get my hands on all those cookie jars. These guys are the Wizard of Oz. They're, they're, it's all jive. It's all this. I think that's one of the big lessons of the moment. Guess what? We are it. And we do have access to the deep knowing. And we also have access to a huge process of conscious evolution, whether you call it ascension or just growth. It doesn't matter what your words are, but um, we're experiencing some of these things. We want to break that down because there are huge things happening that we actually can wrap ourselves around. We actually can participate and support each other through. It is, I mean, I don't, do you feel disappointed in what happened on December 21st, Elizabeth? Uh, uh, Christina, yeah, do you? I don't, <laughs> because all along, I I love all the different ideas. I there's they're so interesting to me. Everyone's experiences and ideas about what's going to happen. I mean, I I read them all. I know them all, <laughs> but I always kept it sort of like, okay, well, we'll see if that's going to happen. Okay, just kept a really open mind about it and tried not to hold on to any one particular thing. So I'm feeling pretty good um, in that regard. But I really do feel for the people who who really wanted, you know, for this this golden age to just happen. And I understand. I mean, I really, I'm sorry that didn't happen that way. But, you know, what you're waiting for is you. (laughs) Straight up, Christina. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. There is. So uh, are we experiencing any shift of the ages is there a new epoch? Are we at the beginning of the Aquarian age? Is there anything palpable through our own direct experience, our own direct knowing that we can share, and then from there uh, evolve uh, tools and perspectives that could be of assistance? I know I am. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I was in meditation for two days on uh, December 21st and 22nd, and uh, I am experiencing, uh, I, I mean, the new energy has been coming in uh, for a while. It feels like we have a gigantic upgrade. It, this feels like powerful, powerful uh, light and love pouring in. It, it, it's like the same energy that was before on steroids. I don't know how else. And uh, it's creating a huge opportunity, but it's going to also create a huge reactivity, and, and I think it's really important to trust ourselves, 
putting ourselves out there in Shadowland Voyagers. We're, we're, uh, putting ourselves, not as role models, but kind of because we're saying, all right, this is what we're experiencing here. And, um, I'm experiencing it on the positive side as whatever I invest my uh, total beingness in is getting super amped up. It's like being in an energy vortex, an amplification, mm-hmm. a, a tsunamis of, of potential light and love pouring in. So it's, in my experience, it's, e- it's much easier than it ever was to transmute uh, shadow energies. And if we do not awaken to what is truly going on, we are going to get so slammed. You know, it's like, uh, what do they say? Uh, well, our, our dear friend Sean Blackwell, uh, am I going insane or am I waking up? <laughs> I mean, it, and I, I really, it's getting, this energy is going to polarize people, I think, extensively mm-hmm. uh, into one or the other. So it's really time to voyage into the Shadowland. I mean, am I? Um, what is your experience? Yeah. It, it feels to me this week like the, this light was turned on in a dark room. <laughs> and cockroaches are scrambling, snakes are hissing, and everyone's just standing there completely naked going, uh... <laughs> And your stuff is starting to show to everybody now. And, yeah, it's it's do or die time. Evolve or die time. This is it. <laughs> so, Elizabeth, you're talking about externalizing. I mean, this is a huge thing that uh, that you're mentioning here, the externalization. Because if we keep doing that, uh, yeah, your stuff's going to be showing to everyone except for yourself, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, um, I want to I want to talk about something. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I I, I want to talk about it, but I want to feel into how to bring it about because there's a lot um, going on. I think right now that is. Um, very confusing for people when um, there's a bombardment of feelings that maybe uh, that are stemming uh, in a particular, say, area that one thought they had worked through already. And yes. it's really creating confusion um, because, it's, you know, it's what's happening uh, from what I can see um um, is that it's becoming more crystal clear, like uh, like when I express, let's just say, you know, it's becoming crystal, like I, I'm, I've been questioning, so now every time I'm questioning and there's this like influx of uh, negative suggestions uh, that are in abundance, you know, uh, and overwhelming. And uh, I can see where people would start freaking out about being able to um, see certain aspects of themselves play out as if they're separate, as a uh, as a passenger in the vehicle kind of thing. Like if we're starting to get these extrasensory perceptions, um, empathic abilities, telepathic abilities are starting to come online, but the empathic abilities are online now. It's all green. It's go. And so I think we're feeling into a lot more than we're truly aware of. And so it's these interactions. And, and, and if you are in an obs- a, a, a mode of observation, you can start to see in relationship. So, you know, you start to work it out. But if you're not in observation and you're trying to get good feelings, which was the huge expectation in this last two weeks, was it not, between mm-hmm. the end of the world that never came and the, uh, the Armageddon that is here, the great revealing is here. This is what it meant, I think. Um, this is my understanding, is that things are becoming more clear mm-hmm. And depending on where you're at on your journey on that particular subject matter, because it's going to be different for each person depending on what it is. But what I think is happening is, is that the, the root of the weeds are being shown and it's a little overwhelming for people. And we don't, look, I didn't ever willingly go into doing this kind of work 
to start with until I was on my knees begging for mercy, <laughs> you know. Uh, and then I show up. And now I'm realizing the value and I'm showing up. But it doesn't, that, that makes it easier, I have to admit. But that, in, that initial wanting to not be seen in that light or to defend oneself. In uh, what light, Elizabeth? I'm, I'm sorry. The, uh, be seen in the light of lack of integrity, lack of authenticity. Okay, so shadow aspects coming up is what brought you to your knees. Is this what you're saying? I think um, I didn't see it that way when I came to my knees. Uh, back in July, I had an experience like that. I think it was um, realizing how far from where I was intending to go in this life, how far I had roamed. Um, that brought me to my knees and to be seen in a light that, uh, of, of these darknesses acting out of me when that was never my intention. That, that in and of itself is, it will bring you to your knees once it's seen. And I think that's the toughest part to face. I think that's the part where the, that we're trying to avoid and, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, there are a lot of, uh, border patrol in that space because, uh, Whatever's feeding off of these behaviors doesn't want it to be seen either because the game will be up. <laughs> okay, let's break that down a little bit. That that was huge, uh, fabulous information. But it, we may be um, over jumping some people's understanding of of what we're saying here. Uh, the border patrol and um, yeah. feeding off of these energies and what we're actually talking about here. And uh, I, I feel like. We're, well, we actually feel there. like we're in the soup tonight. You know, it's yeah. like I feel in the collective soup of of huge, uncomfortable energies rising up. When we thought we were going to be in the gorgeous golden age of love and compassion and unity, consciousness, and the end of separation, and it's just this mucky, uncomfortable. And a lot of people I know are sick. A lot of people are physically sick. I am physically sick. Because I think there's a huge purity that whatever we haven't faced, whatever we haven't, or whatever the dredges of those who have even been facing and owning, it's all right. This huge light, a tsunami, is pushing the darkness up to the surface. Isn't that? I mean, I think that's what you're talking about. Yes. And, okay. So we're at, we will pick that up at the end of the break. Yep. Yes. Yes. <laughs> See you on okay. the other side. Welcome back, everyone. This is Shadowland Voyagers. Are we on the lunatic fringe or the evolutionary edge? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> you You're gotta laugh here, girls. You got to laugh. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> yes, yes, because. I mean, if we're still here, I figure the only reason that that we're left here is we didn't get something right, you know. We and uh, I think that that that's part of this huge uh, growing up that uh, we are seeing that there is a pathway, there is an ascension portal, but it's an inside job, and uh, and there are many people that are beginning to understand what that is because those awarenesses are opening up. And I think that the people are left out in the cold, you know, uh, want to know how to do that turnaround. And some of us, however it happened, we just had to deal with that stuff a little bit sooner in the game. So we're just trying to be the midwives here going, well, you might check this out now. <laughs> see how this is working for you and see how it's working for us because 
I am not at all disappointed. As a matter of fact, uh, this is such a huge wake up call and there is so much love and so much potential. It's such a clean, it's the great purification is upon us. Of course, when we're detoxing at this huge, gigantic level, it's not comfortable. But oh my goodness, the amount of love, the amount of healing, the amount of acceleration of light, it's, it's a time for, to me for great joy but also to really roll up our seat and and be the cleanup job of ourselves. To be the cleanup job of ourselves, that's all that's left to do. We were talking about this this afternoon, the, the, this idea that uh, that we really haven't understood. We have been in our infancy, and we have and we bought a lot of the lies that we're supposed to just be good, upstanding citizens, good boys and girls, listen to mommy and daddy, and do our very best. And we there is a huge taboo against knowing who we are, and what we are is a huge vat of darkness and light, and it's the alchemy of transmuting the darkness that is the ascension path. And so I think that now more than ever, um, I, we can be bolder and braver in sharing those experiences. So tell us what's really going on with you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> My cat is going psychotic out on the porch, but I'm sure that's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is, this is an interesting time. <laughs> I, I honestly feel that there are um, a lot of people out there that um, want to hear good stuff, want to hear, you know, enlightening stuff. And I think that um, th- that there are a couple things to make clear about this shadow work and the good stuff comes as a symptom of doing the work. And... Um, I, I, I haven't found another way around it. I tried, and it, there just doesn't seem to be any. <laughs> I will say that every single time I look at what's going on as an observer, not emotionally attached to any outcomes or you know anything like that, when I just look, that's the moment that I have chosen my own personal sovereignty and my own freedom. And it's so hard to express that in feeling and in words to someone that has touched the surface and understands things. Uh, All layers have great learning in them. All layers do. So so you're saying, you mean that that the way that you have entered the shadow land where it wasn't so devastating is to not identify but to to remove the veil so that you're really taking a very naked look at all aspects of your being and some things that are not so pleasant some character traits some maybe you'll go into that a little bit later um are well, the- I think life life is providing the lessons by the circumstances that arise within one's life so it's not really that – now, I, I have um, created some of that fire necessity within myself by p- making an aim to come into that full uh, essence, into that true authenticity that we talk about. Uh, that, that, has, that has become quite the aim. So I'm, I'm always shooting out that arrow in that direction as much as I possibly can – fathom doing it so you know any- i have i have a person that who says he, he tracks me around town and says everyone's talking about this authenticity yeah well i have heard it for years and i and i have taken course after course and study with it, and i still don't know what it is you know because of, so i think when we're using all these big words yeah. that to us we just understand it i don't mean to be giving you a hard time but i am giving you a hard time i apologize i don't feel I, a, I don't feel a critical at all okay, good. yeah because I, i'm getting that people don't know what we're talking we're so used yeah. to the territory we almost have an in languaging and it, it's going over the head of everybody so i need to break down yeah please what it, what it is you're mm-hmm. talking about being a witness 
Mm-hmm. And uh, what I'm understanding from that, because going into the shadow land is so intimidating, if in fact this is the only portal, the ascension portal available, is to remove the illusion and the veil and look at the outer and the inner with tremendous truth, with unflinching clarity, and seeing some very, very ugly things. We are seeing it more and more in the outer, and the massive alternative media, and that is becoming a seduction in a way that we might consider uh, viewing, but not identifying with. But when we're looking at the inner terrain, I know that the collective... uh, mind is how do i do that how do i face what has been so taboo to face which it feel and i have i actually have friends and people who write me going uh you know you seem to think that wallowing in in horror is is the only way through this and i think that you're full of it and there's got to be a different way and which is a complete misinterpretation of everything that we're saying um anyway this witness aspect seems to me a critical part of it. But it takes, perhaps, Elizabeth, it takes that moment where you fell on your knees in total humility and you uh, you call out to your highest self, show me the truth. And if you're really willing to look, wow, is this new energy going to show you? And so th- is that what you're saying, that if you hold this neutral place, uh, that uh, that's a navigation tool? Yeah, what I do is I envision myself as a passenger in my own body, like as if the body is a vehicle, and I let the program run. Whatever, you know, uh, role that's played normally, I let the program run, and I'm uh, observing in a way, like I, I, uh. That's brilliant. Yeah. That's help. That's concrete. People can, can, do, so you're talking about shadow aspects right you're saying okay i want to see what well so so when does a person actually go gee maybe i better look at this and and then actualize that when does that come up how can some people have no clue what their shadow is and other people are getting this uh witness observer where this truth is coming online for them what how does that happen? Well, that's the thing is like, uh, you know, for me, it's like any time there's, um, well, it usually shows up as, as uh, judgment inside, which creates like a dissonance, uh, an uncomfortable feeling, uh, uh, unable to um, express myself well, uh, that kind of thing. I, I mean, I think... I think everyone knows what an emotional response feels like. And and I think that's when I really kind of tune in and go, what is going on? Mm -hmm. And if if, if for some reason I can't in the moment, then, um, you know, I I see whatever I can and let the time, let it, let it pass by. And then I contemplate it later. I, I don't let it go at it's their fault anymore because that for me was a pitfall Somehow I was able to, you know, even after years of spiritual work, find a way to blame everybody else Mm -hmm. for the way I felt. So this is something that is a huge limitation to actually think that, uh, to, to find these justifications of why, you know, they're, they're, they're the ones to blame, why they screwed up and, and not look at oneself and, any you mean I'm not supposed to be pissed that they canceled the friggin' ascension on me? No, <laughs> no, Gosh. no, because this Thanks. is a. This I don't is, know. I don't know. Look, we na- well, that's a whole. That's a whole. I don't know. Is that another show? I mean, we. That's a whole topic, because look. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's not go there. Yeah. I want to hear Christina right now. I can feel she's got stuff to tell us here because she is. Uh, she does a lot of this stuff, so. Christina, can you help us out here? Well, I I agree with Elizabeth. Um, as soon as I get an emotional response or feel like blaming, as soon as I want to blame somebody for the way I'm feeling, it's like I've done this enough to go stop, <laughs> turn the mirror, look at myself, because that's exactly, it's a projection. Um, and like Elizabeth, it becomes, you become an observer to your own self, um, or at least I do. And I look at it and I feel my feelings. I feel my feelings and I, I don't try to, um, 
push them away or um, do something to cover them up, like get drunk or something or just whatever. It's like, okay, I got to feel this. I got to really feel this. And as soon as you look at it, it creates a neutral space and the it loses its charge. It loses its charge because you've taken responsibility for it. And suddenly this wild beast that was inside of you becomes a calm little kitten. <laughs> and it's like, oh, come here, you little thing. You know, it's like, it's just a part of you. Yeah, yeah, injured, but, you, you know, know there's some wounded. seriously wild beasts in people. I mean, I, I have uh, clients. I, I mean, I won't give any names, of course, but I think I can say uh, people that are have been predators, that have been child molesters. There's a lot of uh, very... Uh, uh, painful things inside people that they would do anything to avoid. And a lot of them really do not feel that this is a safe journey to open Pandora's box and let out the, this well, horrible... It uh, comes out all the time anyways. So that's just a lie they're telling themselves. It's so always it come out? its ugly so head. It, yeah. yeah. So what's happening to all that? Because the the uh, as you know, we had our show on Jung. He's saying that you know the, the the greatest evil is within each human soul. But we see it acted out. It's escalating on the world stage. You know, we're in the verge of World War Three. I don't need to play out all the scenarios that I'm about to put you all in camps and take all your guns and and it's all going on out there. And ah, oh, we can't do anything. And yet, inside our, and we're, we see it there, and we're mortified and horrified, and some of us are preparing, and some of us are deer in the headlights, and some of us are in denial. But when we look at it in ourselves, it's this is a terrifying thing for people. Uh, so uh, I guess I'm playing the devil advocate for both of you. Uh, I, I don't know what else to do right now. How can this be so easy? What you're saying? I mean, how do I don't you know? I don't know how to explain how it's easy. I it, and it's not necessarily easy, but it's worth it. It is so worth it because you free yourself. You liberate your own self. I mean, your emotions are held hostage by these shadow aspects, and everybody around you is um. They, you attack them, I, or I did. I mean, my shadow aspects were constantly lashing out towards everybody else, and it's just. And yeah, you didn't realize at the time that was even happening. Well, I did on a on a certain level, absolutely, but I justified. You were in denial, right? You justified. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you, it, it's not that my fault. If you wouldn't have done this, you know, I wouldn't be acting like this. You need to take responsibility. You need to do this. You need you, 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 you know, it, till the cows came home. You know, that's just the way I am. All these, all these things that I this threatened you know, your life in many ways, right? You, well, uh, threatened uh, my, yeah, it threatened my, my marriage. Absolutely. Because, um, I, yeah, I was just refusing to take responsibility, um, for, so many things about myself but so in so many ways uh we are trashing uh Asia used to call it junking your life that we need to look how do we trash our own life train wreck mm-hmm. our own life and face it like oh eh, face it with love right because this is it's a it's a tricky thing because to fa- how do you survive facing it uh, what what qualities need people develop in finding themselves so that they can survive their own inner apocalypse, so that the, their ascension can happen? Mm. I mean, I'm looking at the self love as a part of it. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's what you find it, there. Yeah, you find you it can. there. You don't have it. You don't have it till you go in there and get it. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta say, I gotta say some things here. <laughs> Uh, it came up very much uh, when you were talking, Christina, um, that self-worth, like as you um, uh, do the, like act out these behaviors and unconsciousness, a part of you does know, mm-hmm. you know, that you're harming another person and it's all justified and it all makes sense in your head and it all works out just great for you, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's all good, right? Mm-hmm. Well, that's not exactly how the universe works, Um 
And that's not uh, a lot in alignment with love at all. And this is something I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to share a little bit about my experience is that it, I, I, you know, back in the end of June, I, I had that experience where I was like surrounded by 200 people of like mind and it was all, it was a conference. It was beautiful. People were sharing and loving and all this stuff. And every single time I went to, uh, express, I was at least in observation mode. It's a state of being to, to be in an, ob, in an observe, uh, observing place. And I was in observation mode because I, I knew I went through a really dark winter last winter. And, I, you know, I, I was a little out of tune with socializing and all of that stuff. Well, all of a sudden, out of the blue, this had never happened to me before. I became completely unable to express like every, like there were, there was like limitations and judgments so heavy inside. And I, I just knew that I could hear other people's thoughts and I knew they were thinking bad things about me. And if I just kept my mouth shut and looked pretty and smiled nice, it would all be fine. Okay, I was, so that was your, Inner yeah. judgment, which yes. has nothing to do with self, which is the opposite of what we're talking about. Is Ex- that your point, Elizabeth? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Yes. I'm, I'm getting to my point. Okay. When I realized all the external stuff that, uh, that, you know, all, all, that I was externalizing the, the feelings that I was having about myself, uh, I, I ended up in, a, uh, in that shadow diving place right then. And I, I could see where every single, expression was motivated by um, a, ba- a base of greed. So, you know, I, I wanted appreciation. I wanted somebody to love me and like me and approve of me and all of those things. And that was the motivation. That was what I felt icky about inside most of all, mm-hmm. was that I was I was not able in that moment to give anything. My cup was empty, and I was being a sucking force in, in, in at that conference. That was the icky feeling, and th- I have to say that brought me to my knees. Well, in this new energy, I think that that's a huge piece of this. Yeah, that we're being called forth to a higher love. You know that song, "Bring Me a Higher Love." Mm-hmm. This is the moment. I don't mean that 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 last moment wasn't also that moment, but this is really the moment. And that nothing else is really, it's so apparent that nothing else is going to serve. If we are out there using uh, whatever method to get for ourselves, uh, how can I put this? This is always, everything is such a balancing act because I'm not saying you have to serve everyone and be a martyr and never think of yourself. No. You need to be fully available, fully present. And but then serve the higher love, and you will be filled up. But when we are going from those, from that kind of, um, you call it sucking. It's like the vampiric, right? They talk about mm-hmm. that a lot in the Celestine prophecy. Yeah. yeah. And we we are literally conduits for other forces, for dark forces, and but our whole civilization has been based on looking after number 1 and being an individual and everybody fighting each other so that we could just be these sucking mechanisms uh for uh, other uh, a feeding ground for for uh, these other energies in this energy by the way i really feel that those those uh, um interdimensional beings that have been really holding us to this are, are not able to sustain this frequency mm-hmm. so i I really feel they're exiting rapidly, not all of them and all at once, but it's happening. And what we're left with is these egoic states of me, 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 the the deprivation, the pain. There's so much. I mean, there are a lot of layers. I don't mean to simplify this, but yeah, and I appreciate your transparency in um and vulnerability in discussing that. And I, I'm glad we're getting down to this point because I think people can identify with our real stories. And this is how we can maybe, uh, you know, all kind of open up uh, to to what the real path is, is in facing things that are so painfully uncomfortable to look at and experience. But you, you're still alive, Elizabeth. You got through it somehow, right? Yeah. 
I got through it beautifully. I'm still working stuff out, but it's it's definitely um, through that though. How did you get through that conference? Did you have a shift then, or was it later that you you uh, uh, oh. awakened from that? Well, just- I, you know, I met people. I met I met people that were so bright. I, I can't even express uh, in words the, this couple. They were so bright, and you know, they just looked at me and. Uh, just showed me that darkness inside the kind of like, uh, well, I don't know if I want to go into all the details, but I, I definitely got to see that shadow and I was like, okay, all right. Now, well, did, I, they, did they see it or did yeah. you mean just, no. they actually yeah. were so bright? Yeah. But, uh, Reflected. What do you mean they were so br- Okay. They were yeah, fine. they were bright. They were bright. They were like angels. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's hard. I don't want to put labels to people that are just bright spirits. You know, and and uh, well, but they're you can serving be humanity. Light and, okay, but you can be a bright light and reflect back someone's shadow, mm-hmm. or you can also say, "Gee, what's wrong?" You could actually see it and communicate it. So I just wanted uh, to understand more what how that shifted for you. Yeah, it was, you know, it's just, it's just, you know, it's like we all get a little help along the way. And I was, I was like, I, I was in that space of wanting to see that integral space of like, I know it's icky and I want to see it now. I'm ready to see this. I'm ready to take a look at this, you know, beast in me that wants to be so nasty that I'm suppressing. You know, and want to be free of it. Yeah, and I didn't know what it was, but I felt it. And 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 through whatever they did, um, they I in my mind's eye, I was able to visualize this thing in me that was a that that is a shadow, like this. It's you know, I created it. This is the interesting thing. I created Mm -hmm. this shadow aspect to deal with all that crap. You know, whatever that crap was. And it had to do with, uh, uh, trust and compassion and, uh, not, not wanting to give it anymore unless it was given to me first kind of BS. You mm-hmm. know, there's all this, all these little itty bitty decisions that you just, like I said, you know, you have your justifications and it's all good, you know, cause it's all pat and simple in your little justification box, you know. But it has an icky, slimy, sle- seething mm-hmm. feel to it. And that's what I was feeling. And it just was like the elephant in the room. And the room was dark and I couldn't see it. But I kept bumping into it. And I'm like, get out of my way. And, and it's, it's growing, right? <laughs> it would not get out of my way. And the more it grew, the less room I had. Yeah. That is exactly right, Christina. You got that visual down. The more it grew, the less room I had to be me. And it, it had grown over that winter to uh, in, seemingly insurmountable uh, size that I, I lost my voice. I lost expression. I lost my smile. I lost my spark. You know, I was dulled and I, 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 I got a helping hand. I was in, I was in grace. I, I was in that, that moment where life says, this girl needs a little help in hand. She needs a little loving. And that's exactly what I got. But the loving came in the form of somebody saying, see, this is it. And I went home and grieved for two weeks and began the work and knew that I needed to turn about face and take responsibility. I, I got a helping hand, but I had to do the work. That's I just, right. You know, it's like footprints in the sand, you know. Uh, all that time, you know, that I didn't, you know, I, I was, I was being carried. And that's how I, f- I felt this whole way is just completely held in that space in grace to do this work because I changed my mind. That's how that's, it, it does work. Yeah. And this new energy is going to support people mm-hmm. even faster and even more directly. And, and it's taking less and less time to process through because the fire has been turned up gigantically with all of these solar alignments. And it's so in support of, um, of those of us that, that, that are, are changing our minds. It, it is completely supportive of that. And it's also supportive to get you to change your mind. <laughs> yeah, make the choice for life. Yeah, yeah. So, Christina, what do you think? I think that we have to clean up everything. We got to clean up ourselves. <laughs> we got to clean it up. But no one wanted to clean it up. We wanted to be ascended out of here, but sorry, we got to clean it up. Yeah. See, that's the thing. That's yeah. the thing. And it, it, we can get angry out there. 
that it didn't happen to us. But it is happening. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Shadowland Voyagers. Your experience, perception, and questions are deeply appreciated here. Join the conversation. Call in at 213-233-3998 or 888-832-2027. Welcome back, everyone. Hour two, Shadowland Voyagers. And I just want to thank, uh, Christina and Elizabeth. You know, uh, when we, uh, got together to do this show, uh, I really uh, felt guided by a, a higher aspect of myself to embrace b- the both of you because I knew that you authentically were being called by your own higher ass, by life itself, to, uh, take this really deep and penetrating journey through the Shadowland. And that, uh, our task would be instead of to become, uh, show-like and create a big fanfare and a lot of really wild phenomena out there and, and be the dog and pony show that we would dive and, and become more transparent, more truthful, more revealing, uh, allowing other people to join with us into the real work right now. And it feels like, uh, Tonight, we're launching into a deeper level, and it's, it's uncomfortable. It, it's hard to probably for you to do it, but I really appreciate I just appreciate you both so much for being willing to, because this is what we're all so afraid to do, to come out in public domain and, and to reveal these aspects. I mean, there's so many social taboos about this. You can lose your job. If you, you know, reveal that there's a vampire living inside of you, it, it doesn't go real well. <laughs> You can lose your family. You can lose your career. Uh, you can become very unpopular. There's a gigantic taboo. And yet, this to me is the ascension portal. This is the fuel, the ascension fuel. And I really liked what uh, you were both uh, intimidated in terms of this witnessing aspect that uh, and i feel that this is more and more the case that you even though we are saying yes you have to feel it to some extent you do not have to dive into the darkest grim and stay there for eons of time wallowing in horror there is uh, as uh, this divine energy is pouring in there's so much grace with this there's so much synchronicity and we can I'm finding we can pull up whole complexes like nets out of the sea, whereas before you'd have to chisel away, because I've been doing this work since the 70s, chisel away at bits by bits by bits, layer by layer. Now it feels like the entire complex of fear, for example, or the entire aspect of ego, it's just all pouring up at once. And a part of me is able to stand back and witness, and then I can choose. And then the energy transmutes. So it's becoming a really fine-tuned alchemy that this new energy is affording. And I just want to make this really clear. I'm not saying that it isn't difficult or challenging, but and it isn't a very, very volatile area of human concern. Um, Anyway, I I, uh, just think it's so incredibly valuable that you two are revealing aspects of your own reality as uh, food for other people 
to uh, be nourished and perhaps develop the bravery to take that step themselves. Now, uh, we are also seeing there are people uh, who are still seemingly far from this and uh, who are doing... Okay, we'll be right back. We'll be right back and we'll go further into this. didn't have the apocalypse, but there's still a chance for the meek to inherit the earth. Don't give up hope. <laughs> I don't know. I think this is the apocalypse. This is the great revealing. Oh, yeah, you think so? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, prove it, Timmy. Prove it. Prove it. <laughs> <laughs> I see a lot of shadow aspects at play right now all around me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, actually, I want to talk about that. I really do want to talk about what we're seeing all around because it is getting uh, the people who are not able to stand back and witness this and jump in, and uh, it's getting crazy and saying, I want to hear what you have to say about that, Christina. Mm, I'm not sure, Elizabeth. Just <laughs> <laughs> way to pass the buck. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I could, I could talk about this. Couples are breaking up all over the place. Couples that would hold it together uh, out of not really authentic connection, but a kind of a jive connection, but maybe, you know, work better for the money, for the this, for the that. Like there is no energy left in illusion, y'all. It is done. Mm-hmm. It, 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 this is like the, it is such the moment. It doesn't end because if you're holding on, it. It's like all of the energy is just draining out of everything that's false. It's just not there. So we are left with, uh, and so there's lots of fights. And all the stuff you were talking about, uh, blaming and finding all kinds of reasons to, there are a lot of people that are going to blame till the end. And, the, and I don't, I don't know what to say to those people. I see it happening. I have a friend here that she is just being called to these couple counselings all over the place. People are in horrible states of upset as this great purification, is. but instead of owning it and doing what you are talking about, they're acting it out. We call it projection, externalization. But um, what are you seeing in your world? Are you seeing any of this going on? The other, Yeah, and the other thing, so there's a lot of that, just verbal you know, attack, blaming, all of that kind of stuff. But there's also, I noticed, quite a few people are having physical symptoms where basically a shadow aspect um, is being forced to the surface. So think of like a splinter and it starts to hurt. And you can feel it physically within your body. So where this energy is being held in your body, um, it it seems that people are starting to actually physically feel that as though there's something in there. Um, a pressure, a pain, uh, maybe hard to breathe. Uh, feels like their heart is hurting. That is that is just uh, this shadow aspect trying to surface. So there's a lot of that going on right now, and it's nothing that's happening to you. It's just something inside of you that needs to come out. It's part of this integration process. So it just need to really feel it, allow it, just feel it, allow it to surface. Um, Follow it down if you can if you can find any emotions that are attached to it and just follow it to the source and you're gonna up and uproot it. Get it out. It wants to come out. Yeah, once the observation is is happening, um, you can start to see the relationships between things and, and you know, you may like in my experience I had visions and things like that that helped me to see clearly. And once you can see clearly what's what's happening um you can start to question and uh uh start to see the roles that you've been playing um with regard to that that comes up and um and, and once that's that process begins uh and, and you're in that place of feeling it i think that's when uh it's actually being healed so i it's, i'm 
I, yes, I agree. What I'm seeing is there's just layers of BS upon layers of BS. You know, you think you got you nailed it because it's like you're suturing a wound, or life is suturing our wounds, and the, or, or however you look at that, it's something's draining. And it's a big wound, and it's full of infection, eons of infection, and some of it's coming out. And we tend to, uh, it seems to me, it's our nature to go, oh, well, that's it, but we're not getting the whole thing. Yeah. This is where it is helpful mm -hmm. to work together yeah. because the clever part about the dark side is the shadow hides in the blind spot. And it's very, very hard to see this all by ourselves, yeah. I think. Uh, I can feel it in myself. And we can get very proud of You know, we have an insider. Where, well, that's it. Now I've got it. And you, I can, of course, you can see it easier in other people. Like, no, she doesn't have it. She has that piece. And there's a whole other thing that she is so not going to face. And she's going to pretend that the thing she's got is now it. And that is really not the biggest thing at all. I see that all the time in people. It's like in a garden when you're pulling weeds. If you don't get the root, it seems like you got it. You got the big flowery top and the long stem. And it's like, yeah, I got it. But actually, you just broke it off at the surface. And it's deeper down in there. And it's going to go three more stalks next time. <laughs> yeah. So, and the yeah. things that, unfortunately, the things that we are most attached to, the things that would really, really upset our world, like, for example, in a relationship, uh, I've seen people, incredibly aware, amazing, brilliant people that have huge insight, but they're in a relationship that really is not even a relation. I mean, they're really not connecting, but maybe they're super involved in business projects together. Uh, financially, they can't really separate. It would be like a huge upset to face, oh, my God, the truth is this is not working for my soul. But to leave it is going to be so uncomfortable. Uh, it's going to cause such hardship that I refuse to face it. And I see this going on a lot right now because to really break with uh, the, our uh, contracts with the dark side, there's often something so bloody uncomfortable. We just ain't going there. But now in the new energy, there's, there's nowhere to run and nowhere to hide because it's not going to be comfortable to, to hide. It's been a lot more comfortable just to be in a kind of, gr just to go well, along with things. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying because the, the dark, the light was off before and so we could be really comfy in that dark room with our elephant because we couldn't really see it all the time even though it was there. <laughs> now the light's yeah. on, you know, and all this stuff is coming to the surface. And I don't want to say to the people who are afraid of change, um, I know it's really uncomfortable and it's really, really scary, but it's so important right now to really let go of everything and trust the process. Trust your higher self. Trust life because you're going to be led in the direction that's going to be uh, supporting your evolution. So on the surface, it may look like you're losing everything, um, but it's going to make room for something else. And you know what? You never know what's going to happen. You don't know. You know, I was not with my husband for two months because I needed to go do that. And it was really scary and really difficult. And But we're back together now, and our relationship is a million times better than it ever was before. And we had a great relationship before. So you just never know. You just have to trust the process and know that it's it's going to be okay. Well, this is the Ascension portal. This And, and you are... Being the the war the spirit huge spiritual warriors these the qualities that you're describing these are things that we are so uh, afraid of do we want to but I mean there's a part of us this whole culture is trying to make us so comfy security we're so security minded our possessions the things we cling to and in a loveless world where so much has been scary and there's been so much external war. There's no blame that we've been clinging. And then we find out the only things they gave us are the very things that now we need to let go of. It's really unfair. I want my money back, and I want it done with it. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Where have we gone? <laughs> she wants her it's back. It's not fair. <laughs> I did not sign up for this. You two signed up for this. I did not sign up for this. <laughs> Who would sign up for this? Who would do this? 
to themselves. You know, sometimes I really do get angry. It's like, it, it really has to be this hard. I mean, yeah. didn't the dark side get just a little out of control here? Yeah. Yep. And Did I get a little too ambitious in the life mm-hmm. store? Choose your life store. <laughs> hard to know which one is which. <laughs> this is the hardest classroom. It is so tough here. I mean, wow. I, I think yeah, we, so let's give ourselves a hand of applause. Everybody out there, my God, you know, we're doing it. Yeah. yeah. We are We've some, this far. We are some courageous spirits. That's right. If you've made it this far, you're well on your way. Yeah. If you're listening to this show, you're well. You're okay. totally demented, <laughs> or you <laughs> twisted. For the next step. <laughs> All right. So, what is this new energy asking of us? What is it we need to develop? We know we need to face the dark stuff, but what are the qualities that are also being asked? What are the Transcendent alchemy on the, uh, that, that we need, we talked about, we talked about being able to be a witness. Uh, I, we haven't talked about the ego part of this tonight, but mm. maybe we need to bring that into the picture. I mean, the ego, the ego is facing a huge death. This is the, mm. what I experienced, I experienced a whole race of left reptiles leaving the planet. I did. And then F, I thought, yay, we're saved. And then the next day, I woke up, like, I woke up going, oh, my God, I'm dying. And it was my ego. Like, there was nothing left to cling on. There was no excuses. It was, wow, everything that I have been about is over. There's nothing. And it was, which is insane. It's crazy because the ego can serve the higher self. We know all this. But it is, ego death is, um, a process of grief and letting go, just as if you've lost the dearest person in your life. This is how attached we really are. Our egos, uh, what is it? Alpha Ra says that our ego is our soulmate. I'm not going that far, but I understand how he gets there. I do. I mean, who has been there for you through it all? Your ego. Yeah. The way I see that the ego now, at least my relationship with my ego now, is um, like a horse and a rider. So I feel like my heart is the rider and the ego is the horse, and together we work. And um, But before that, it's like when you're trying to tame your ego, it is like taming a wild horse. It is pulling, and you have to wrestle it down. And then once you do, you become best friends. It's awesome. I have songs running through my head. Right yeah. is on the stone. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know that the higher self often speaks to us in songs. This happens, right? right? Mm-hmm. Yes. We are not going to yeah. ask you to sing that to us, Elizabeth. I hope you understand that. <laughs> I'll sing to you someday, Sienna. You'll love it. Okay. <laughs> we'll put that on the program. <laughs> Later, well, I don't know. I, my ego is incredibly upset. It, I mean, it, this is, it is not so easy to get an ego to, uh, let's put it this way. If you've been working your whole life to get something in, never happens. You never got anything what you wanted. You never, it, it was all just a, blah, and now you're supposed to give it all up and serve this, I don't know. It just, it's not working for me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you got to serve something. You got to serve somebody. Yeah, that's a song too, I believe. That's right. You got to serve somebody. <laughs> the thing is, we have been serving somebody yeah. all this time. It's really hard to admit that everything that you've ever done has been like totally stupid. Have you? I mean, to me, that's part of the no, deal. I don't feel like that. I'm so grateful for all my stupid shit that I ever did. <laughs> no, seriously, because all that stuff has brought me to where I am. Like, really? But, yeah. I mean, here we thought we were going to ascend and the end of the world was going to happen, and here we're still here. It's so embarrassing. I mean, God. Well, this is, you, okay, you're, you're touching on a subject I think it's time to cover. This whole uh, end of the world program. It has been deactivated. <laughs> That's what I say. I've been getting emails all day from people that are going, ha, 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 you ascension freaks. Well, that didn't happen. And while you were off on that trip, the end of the world program is being super activated. So, I don't know. There's a new program running called 
you missed Ascension. <laughs> oh yeah, that, there's that one. <laughs> you know, all this stuff is is set up, I think, to disempower us and yeah. and and take away hope and uh, take away any initiative to uh, be about our evolution. Mm-hmm. We are the change. We so the change. you know, <laughs> the three of us. Oh my God, we are in such deep trouble. No. Oh. Good, but that's good. I like trouble. <laughs> that's the feeling, right? Us? You mean none of this was true? It's up to us? Oh my god! <laughs> I remember feeling that way at many points, and like getting down on my knees and praying. And I remember the words of one of the Mother Teresas. There were a bunch of other Teresas. <laughs> she was in that moment, and she was praying um, to God saying, I am the most broken, pathetic excuse for a human being. You cannot be serious that I am the one who is now going to actualize heaven on earth. Uh, and uh, God said something like, well, who else do I have? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you're it. <laughs> I, mean, I know this is a silly thing, but it's true. We're yeah. it. Yep. It, that is, it, it's just unfathomable in some ways. That but it's people, awesome too. It feels yeah. so empowering. It's like oh, I have the power <laughs> in me to to change my inner world to become happy. It's not something I have to wait for. I don't have to wait for it. It's right here, right now. It's me. You know, that's really empowering for me, at least. And that you've gotten to this place by doing a lot of this oh. outcome. outcome. <laughs> It was a very long, long, difficult journey. I wouldn't want to have to do it again, but I'm really glad I did. You know, it's like climbing a mountain. You know, you you keep your, it's hard work. And you're, are you ever going to get to the top? You know, and you you look up and, oh, it's so far. But then you look back and you go, wow, hey, check out the view. That's pretty cool. I made it. Okay, I made it so far. Keep going. And you know what's interesting about that is even though it, it appears that it's taking so long, it really, it ha- it can happen in the blink of an eye as mm, well. True. Especially now. Yeah. I mean, Especially I, now. Yeah, I'm kind of experiencing some of that stuff, like a blink of an eye epiphanies, mm-hmm. you know, just because I've done big stuff and then all the relative things down the road all kind of alchemize in. It's like no matter where you look and where you work, uh, it's like dominoes. Uh, you know, it, it affects it affects the whole construct of the personality. So I don't know if that makes sense, but it's yeah, it does. yeah, it's 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 definitely, and it can happen in the blink of an eye on on some things while you're doing this work, anyway. Well, and the more you do the work, the easier it becomes. Oh yeah, and the more willing. <laughs> yeah, you're like it's, the big yeah. the big point. The more willing because we know it works. It works every single time. Oh, be honest, be integral. Yeah. Look. Observe. Yeah. And again, it's like, it's just like if you had a splinter, you know how it's really bothering you under there. It's uncomfortable. As soon as you get it out, there's such relief. That's exactly what the, this work is. It's these, these shadow aspects, um, uh, the shadow work does. It just it provides you such a deep sense of relief and peace. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. But what about World War Three? Now, everybody's saying they're about to kick the game board over. We are going to see World War Three. They're about to take you, take away all your guns. You're already completely nuked with Fukushima. Is that all going to change by you owning your little shadow parts, you little girls over there? You are persevering in that role you're playing, Miss. Yeah. <laughs> I'm giving know. you some time. This is. I don't know if you're ever talking to me again, but yeah, I kind of. I mean, this World War Three thing is popping up huge, huge, huge. It's like are okay. You um, I would rather not, but, uh, I, you know, I am not a soothsayer. I'm not saying there is or there isn't, but how does shadow work affect World War Three? Does it? Is it too late? Are too many people asleep? Uh, does every person who wakes up affect uh, the, the, the uh, need to act this out on the global stage? Do you see a relationship? Welcome back. 
is our final half hour here. And uh, we are going to now uh, do predictions because <laughs> <laughs> we are going to do predictions. We have now determined that World War III has been canceled along with the Ascension and the Apocalypse. <laughs> There's not going to be that much exciting stuff happening. We could get bored here. I don't know what's going to happen, but we don't really. We wanted to address prediction addiction. It is a fact that the uh, biggest Internet radio shows are people who are predicting what's going to happen. We are absolutely riveted by prediction addiction. What is that about? Anyway, I think that we, we can't fight this trend, ladies. I think we need to make some predictions now. So, what are our predictions for 2013? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can predict that if you become addicted, ad- attached to a belief, it's going to bite you in the ass. Nice, nice. <laughs> <laughs> what does it look like, an elephant? <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of beliefs out there. They All right, let's many sizes, to- shapes, and colors. All right, what if you believe that it has to get worse before it gets better? Great, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Have fun with that. Okay, and if you uh, believe that you have to be prepared uh, for disaster, I mean, I actually believe that we all should have some preparedness because some of these things are not going to be averted. But do you believe that other people can can uh, predict the future? There's something right here. I think at this point nobody can predict anything, and we need to get over it. Well, the thing is, I think that everybody is in their own stream of consciousness um, that is, like, think of a web. All of our streams of consciousness are connected. Um, And so when you're standing in one particular location, uh, it looks like something is going to happen because of where you are. And so if you speak that out to the collective, um, that's just where you are in the moment. That's what you're predicting is going to happen. But we're constantly growing and changing and so is the collective. So predicting something might come to pass, but likely it's not going to exactly play out the way you thought because you're just seeing it from your particular location. So I would just be really careful with, um, you know, listen, sure, listen to other people's predictions. That's great. Just don't attach to them. Don't make them your own, you know? That's what I said about 2012 and I didn't know that I believed it until the date came and went. Mm. And then I was like, oh, it was there. Mm. Well, it's incredible, this prediction addiction that we have. It's part of that, the whole idea of there is a divine plan, and we are just opening ourselves to actualizing it. Because we don't believe how really empowered, how sovereign we truly are, that we're all in this collective dream and what we won't own will be played out until we get it. Mm. And so the prediction is, whatever you won't own, you will have to live. That's exactly. the only prediction I can make. And as soon as we take this kind of step to maturity and start owning what is in the unseen world of our shadow land, then we become the uh the shapers of of a uh, of a new timeline of the or we align with the organic timeline we allow we accelerate that we put our vote on this ascension timeline we're talking about timelines we're talking about the positive timeline that is the organic ascension with mother earth with the forces of the universe and then there are these art all these art everybody is out there vying for our vote Vote on their timeline. Give your energy to that timeline. They're, you're enlisting your soul force in all these times. They're coming in at the end of the world, and this is going to happen, and that plague, and that disease, and that thing. Well, let's do this. And, and we're going, oh, my God. And, and there's your vote. Boom. There's your energy. There's a bit of your soul force invested in that. Bring it all back. This is all I see to do <clears> now. <throat> this is where our real power lies. Bring it all back into mm-hmm. you and choose to be the light, to be the love, to be this divine feminine force that is connection, that is serving life and harmony and truth and beauty. Be it in every moment. Put your vote in what you create moment by moment, and you will change the timeline. Mm-hmm. That That's the power we have, and mm-hmm. that's 
And that's why there's so much out there enticing us into investing in these other timelines with all this prediction addiction, I think. Mm, beautifully said. Ah, oh, I said something good because I am completely <laughs> beside myself tonight. I've just, it feels like the end of the world and the beginning of the world. There's nothing to say other than to really bring our, just what I said, bring our, bring your, you're so much more powerful than, than they will ever, ever tell you. And, you know, I've been looking at so many movies and Hollywood and TV, all of this stuff. They want you invest in that this is a reality. Invest that that's a reality. No, it's all being marketed to us so that we give this incredible juicy essence that we do have, no matter how depleted, no matter how sick. We are so phenomenal. There is such mm-hmm. a war going on for our souls on this mm-hmm. planet. That much we can say. Mm-hmm. Why? Because we have this incredibly rich DNA. Because we can, uh, we are something that it just hasn't occurred before. And all we need to do is be the love here, mm-hmm. which is like sounds so easy and it's so not. But we can do this, and we are mm-hmm. here to do this. So, I, yeah. I mean, I'm seeing people here in Ecuador, uh, a few handful of people that are just in ecstatic paradise, loving and being kind to the Ecuadorians and bringing sustainability and alternative energy and whatever good we can make at teeny little baby steps, one minute at a time. And it feels like, wow, that's enough. That's awesome. Yes. Because I think that what's little is really huge. Mm. I, I want to go back and talk about a little bit more about this uh, prediction addiction and, and, yeah. and get a little bit more into the juice of the matter. Um, yeah. It seems that, you know, we all want assurance of a static outcome because uh-huh, yeah. we're so afraid of the natural organic flow of life because we don't mm. have any uh, trust in ourselves. Right. And we don't programming. Have, yeah. yeah, and so totally we, programmed out of it. Yeah, and so you know, it, we're we're afraid to 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 be in our organic essence, you know, uh, af- afraid of what we want. See, what happens mm-hmm. is when you know a future outcome, or when you think you know, really, I mean, it's that's the truth of the matter. Uh, you feel assured that that what you want is going to come into fruition. And if it yeah. stops looking that way, what are you left with? Well, you're left with uh, attempts at manipulation to make that future that you wanted, that static place that you dreamed up, to be the tr- to be the way it is. Yeah, I mean that's the thing that life is not static. Life is not linear. No, you know? life itself is is dynamic. It's yeah. fluid and it responds to consciousness on a moment to moment basis. It's like water. It is. It's time to let go yeah. of the shore and move into the river of life. Yeah. Uh-uh. It's scary. <laughs> I can't swim. And I get water on my nose. And I get my hair wet. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. Oh. Too scary. You guys are scaring me. <laughs> I want to know what's going to happen. It's exciting. Let go. It's sure. more, more fun. Trust me. <laughs> Do you know how many... I, I had a... A boyfriend that wandered through here. He had like five different insurance policies. I, I mean, he was like this amazing indigenous. I thought he was so spontaneous and like this divine masculine. And he had like five. He was insured for anything that could ever happen to him from any direction. It's like, what? So, I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, having a good insurance policy in place is a bad thing, I guess. But we're so addicted to it. Control and and so frightened. It's not our fault. It's been a very scary place. Three D is pretty scary. I mean, it's one thing. It's like I back in 2010, I did get a little freaked out about what was coming. Not really sure. I have a family, you know, and I felt like, hush, the writing's on the wall. It's my responsibility to make sure I have some supplies and, you know, just in case something went down. And so I did. I, you know, my husband and I, we we got stocked up on some food and supplies and things, and then I just forgot about it. You know, it's like, okay, I got some supplies, we're good. I'm not going to keep focusing on that and creating this fear thing that's just going to grow and, oh, my gosh, you need more and more and more. No, it's like I got some stuff and I'm good. Now I'm going to continue to work on myself. So, you know, it's not like I don't feel like 
don't do what you feel you need to do to prepare, if that gives you oh, peace totally. of mind. Oh, totally, yeah. Yeah, totally. but I don't make the it your Northern everything. Hemisphere. Yeah, don't make that yeah. your everything. Just, yeah. But even coming to the Southern Hemisphere, I realize there's no escape. There is no escape in the Illuminati. There's no escape in the global agenda. There's no escape from GMOs, from big pharma. It's everywhere. Um, it really is. I, I it's still really enjoy being down here. Uh, but, um, and I do believe in preparedness, quite honestly. I, it's obvious that we're going to go through some really big things because the collective awakening is not to the place where we're not acting it out. Yeah, I really uh, think so. I mean, I feel like this week even that some structures are starting to shift and change um, on a smaller scale. And I feel it's just a matter of time before the political structure starts changing. And um, I just feel everything's going to shift as we shift internally. It's going to shift outwardly. It, there's just a matter of time. And I think there will be a, a small period of time where it might be a little uncomfortable. You know, like if you're remodeling your house, there's a period of time where it looks really bad <laughs> and it's not enjoyable to be in. But then the new creation starts to take place. That's where we need to be proactive and create this new paradigm that we are um, entering into now. We have to create it? Wait a minute. I thought it was just going to happen. <laughs> no, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> we have to create it? Oh my God! You know that's that's something I, I, I drugs that would help us do that in a better way. <laughs> drugs, alcohol, I don't know something. Sorry, I'm just in a mood. <laughs> 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 like, oh my God, we're gonna have to create it. No, it, it, and that's a fun part. Actually, it's a fun part. Like, yeah, seeing what it's, you can do yeah. right where you are, baby steps, little yeah. things with your neighbor, in your local communities. What yeah. can we do right here to take our power back and to do yeah. things? And suddenly it gets a lot of fun. We are doing that that kind of stuff down here. I know a lot of you can do that right where you are. But if we get, keep waiting for Big Daddy uh, to fix it, to make it better, to bring us the supplies, to put us in camps, it's not going to look so good. No. So it's it's and it's so much it's so empowering after being so disempowered to be able to show up and see that your good uh, higher love can move. Maybe they're mini mountains, maybe they're mm-hmm. anthills, but they're moving every day. It's a beautiful feeling that the more you do it, the more energy you get to do it. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. really fun. It's, it's really, really fun. fun. And the more interests that come your way, too. I mean, you know, you start getting interested in life again. Because that's the thing. It's like when, when, you're, when you're being pulled down to your knees in, in that mercy grip, you ain't interested in much. And it's just, you know, you got work to do. And you are doing the good work at that moment if you're looking mm-hmm. inside. And, and there comes a time when uh, in my life there's come a time now where I'm starting to get interested in life again. And, and that that's something... That 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 is something that is huge, because yeah. it's been quite apathetic for years now. I mean, mm-hmm. years. Angry and apathetic. I, I'm sure there's more in there, but you know, I mean, a, a lot of emotional turbulence has been going on. A lot of violence. Some people violence. that mm-hmm. there are a lot of people that right now are gonna are, need to do both of those things. Mm-hmm. That because and that's what alchemy is. You activate both sides of the force. You activate the shadow aspects. And when it feels like, ah, then you go out and give something to somebody. You go out into your garden and the energy transmute. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that's what we're doing, dross into gold. We're, we're, I mean, I keep my shadow, awareness of my shadow, the witness active, hopefully, all the time. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. keep activating the other. There's sometimes you have to take time out. You have to be in the here and now with this. It's yeah. not like it was with us, you know, years of this. I, I, there's not time for that. Mm-mm. It has to all happen simultaneously now for the people who are awakening mm-hmm. to this. And there's so and much, does. there's so much grace and support to do it too. That's, that's the other part. So there's no fear in that statement. It's, there's so much grace and support. And once you start, the synchronicities will start, the interest will, uh, you know, arise in you. And for me, I just wanted to be of service. Mm. Yeah. yeah, life really does support this. Yeah. Absolutely. It shows up. <laughs> even even if it's all at once, I suppose, you know. Mm-hmm. Take mm-hmm. a couple of days and go insane, I guess. <laughs> it's that, you know, it, it does look that way to the structured world. At first. Yeah. 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 
It's okay, though. It's part of the process. I mean, yeah, ascension is a it's a proactive participatory thing that you do with life. It's it is alchemy. It's the new alchemy because we're in a new energy, uh, and so I mean, it's an ancient alchemy. But uh, in terms of breaking our contracts with the dark side, no longer being slaves to a system that is destroying life, to walk away from it and then to see the parts of us that were addicted to us, the parts of us that were uh, uh, complicit with it, be brave enough to see it and pull it out as much as we can by the roots and then serve a new paradigm. Be the be the, the that change, and that's happening on a global. There are a lot of people talking about this, but I don't believe that we are going to be able to manifest it until we do the inner work, because it's all teamwork. And every team mm-hmm. I see gets dysfunctional about the shadow aspects that they're not owning. It com- they're so prevalent that even in the some of these great uh, evolutionary teams, people are in a lot of conflict. They can't agree. Uh, they can't work together. So this is why it all needs to happen simultaneously now, uh, the, the inner work, the shadow work, so that we can function because this is a team effort now. This is coming back from separation. So doing the, the work on the transmutation of ego is, is going to be very important. And we're going to be talking about that in practical ways in the mm-hmm. weeks ahead as well. It's time to wake up to yourself. You know, awakening means breaking free of the dream, the illusions of what we are not. It's time to wake up. You had some really sweet quotes here. Did you want to read any of that? Uh, Mm. The one by Alan Watts, for example. There's that one. There is one. I actually wanted to read this Muji one. Um, Okay. Okay, that'd be sweet. All right. Your inner house is on fire. No water can put this fire out. This burning itself is grace. I'm very happy for you in this burning. Mind cannot help. Something is cooking inside, and behind this cooking is complete peace. Something has been held in the shadows for a while. It has not really been recognized, but somehow recently it's been touched. Keep your hands together in this fire. Something is taking care of everything in this fire. This fire is purifying everything. You, your own self, is pure eternally. It has never been corrupted, can never be corrupted. But somehow, the way existence plays in this form, identification arises with form, with time, with space, relationship, all these things. And beingness somehow gets destructed, confused, feeling the influence of mind. Sometimes a hypnosis from our own projections and concepts. And so we somehow taste that feeling of suffering. Something drew you here to come into complete recognition with your entire being of who you are. And so, who you're not is on fire. This fire is burning fiercely, but it will not burn you. It will burn what you are not. Mm, That's beautiful. Oh, I, I love that. This fire is burning fiercely, but it will not burn you. It will burn what you are not. Did you want to read more of Mm -hmm. that? No, that was the end of that that quote there. There's another one if you want me to read this other Muji one. It's really nice after all of this volatile conversation to (laughs) calm into these beautiful... Yeah, I'm liking this. Okay, I'll read this one. Yeah, we have a couple minutes left, so I can read this one. It's Muji again. He says, Many times people come to the very gate of self-recognition, and it says, Step on in, and they go, Ah, and step out, because fear comes. Escaping from freedom. Most people would think you'd escape from jail, but they're escaping from freedom. Something inside the mind is still dedicated to their own self-image, and something feels vulnerable. I'm going to die, or something. And either they don't have someone in front of them to remind them, this is an illusion. You're not going to die. You're going to live. Or then they will start to think, I'm going to go crazy. No, you're already crazy. You're going to become sane. Everything is back to front. The mind turns it like that. So what we can do, one who is true is sincere. This one will go through the gate of self-recognition. One comes to a point where no risk is a risk. Mm. And here's one by George, right? On the road to compression, nothing can remain hidden. All impurities eventually get brought to the surface, exposed and weeded out. Mm. (laughs) One of my favorites, yes. (laughs) 
You got another one here, Awakening to the Free and Sovereign Spirit. You want to read that? You can read it if you like. It's an excerpt from his book, Our Universal Journey. George Vassilis. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love this. The more our ego surrenders, the more flow we experience. As a result, the veil between our lower self and our higher self becomes thinner and thinner as we express the greater aspects of self more often. Our soul essence now begins to flow forth like an eternal fountain, emanating, empowering, and being. We are heading towards a moment in time when the veil will become so thin that an opening will occur in this reality as the higher self merges with the lower self and is integrated and absorbed by the soul. We literally start becoming a master of universal light walking this earth. So that is the ascension, right? Mm -hmm. Let go and just be. Letting go is about non-attachment. To just be simply means being your authentic self. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's what this is all about right here. Okay, so there's five more minutes left. Actually, Um, we are going to, our music's going to start. Oh, is it five minutes? Yeah, we have a couple minutes. We have three minutes before our music starts. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's say, uh, for those of you who would like to engage in a supportive, mutually supportive space to engage in your own Shadowland voyaging, please visit www.shadowlandforum.com. Uh, if you have not read my book, Stealing the Moon, What is Wrong with You? <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourselves. And you, <laughs> oh God. and you need to go to www.stealingthemoon.com and purchase the ebook or the, the soft copy. Because this is the, the story of a woman who goes step by step voyaging through this whole thing. So if it's scary or if you'd like a mirror, it's there for you, seriously. And we have all of the past uh, radio shows on there. We have all kinds of people who've gone through uh, Shadowland graduates on uh, stealingthemoon.com. So that's all resource material for you as well. And coming up now in in, uh, January, we have a few hosts that are coming on as well. We have Paul Levy with his Whitico. Am I saying that right? Whitico? I think it's Whitico. Mm-hmm. With Tico, mm-hmm. which is a brilliant book and an amazing man who has deep understanding of the shadow. We have Andrew Harvey coming on. We have Ralph Smart coming on and uh, all kinds of wonderful surprises and interactive experiences in this coming year. So please join us, especially at Shadowland Forum. Please come on, say hello, see what interests you, engage in dialogue. We have some amazing people. That has been one of the most uh, friendly, safe, um, not safe, but really t- truth seeker, kind, supportive places. Mm-hmm. We love you all that participating for that. Bless you. Happy New Year. And let's keep enjoying this ride together, I guess. You want to say anything, Christina? Mm-hmm. Let's- Happy New Year. Happy Wake New up. Year. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Good night.